Hello, everyone. Now, this was my favorite one of the day. This was a big surf. And this surf, this surf, got to use more of the legs. This one was a big one. This, this, this is good. This is like more a gambit style. You go straight in, you just go for it, no soft, and boom. I mean, I've, I wish every surf could be that way. You know? Thank you for raiding with a party of four. All right. Back to chess. Let's go. Let us begin the degeneracy. Yes. Tennis has been fun, but it's time for some chess. It's time for some chess. Gotta get some music. Where where's the I mean look man, I'm just tired. I wasn't even you know I didn't even know I was gonna stream. I feel like I got peer pressured into it, you know. By all you fine people. Oh, the video on how to wear the mask? I, I'm kinda of feeling the effects of uh Whenever I feel better, I'm just gonna watch. This was this one was out. It got a good knee bend. All right, this is. Where's the good one? This one is pretty good. Is this the same one? Yeah. Where is it? Oh, thank you, John. Now, John, we've heard a lot. Are there any fake John Davis accounts now based on the legend himself? All I know about John, aside from his support of all the chess shows, is that he is a big fan of the Museo Gambit, or the double Museo Gambit. And, you know, honestly, I've never met someone who's a fan of the double Museo Gambit to... Uh, is not pretty fun because that's some, basically the most fun opening in chess. I was gonna look at it right now, but uh, you know, should I play? Who is this guy? Oh, here's a question mark. So we don't play question marks. We learned our lesson now from last show. <clears throat> we do not play question marks now. The double Museo Gambit, King's Gambit, by the way. Yeah, I mean, right? You agree that, first of all, you got to mm -hmm. visit Andres' show too. But I'm going to say that uh, anyone who likes the double Museo Gambit, okay, I mean, there's some totally crazy guys who have liked the double Museo Gambit, but it's a good thing to be crazy when it comes to chess, to be exciting. First of all, the King's Gambit itself is degenerate and crazy, just giving the pawn. I mean, Fisher preferred Bishop C4, yes, because there ended up coming out this Fisher defense he came out with. D6, the idea is, you know, after um, D4, G5, H4, G4, there's no longer Knight E5, is the idea. So that's why he played D6 first. Because this was played uh, as early back as Morphe's time, knight e5, threatening knight g4. Also, knight f7 is in the air. So that's why Fisher played d6. It's called the Fisher's defense. d6, and, you know, then I believe bishop c4, and, and black gets in this setup with um, bishop g7, knight e7, or h6 first, and then. Uh, Oh, h6 first, I think. And then bishop g7, it's a normal game. But, uh, you like the Fisher's, uh, you like Fisher's defense? So, so knight f3 goes into Fisher's defense, but bishop c4 avoids Fisher's defense because you haven't committed the knight to f3, so g5, g4 doesn't have the same impact. 
So, I think I had this game with Friedel in 2004. Um, knight f6, knight c3, d5, e d5. He gave the pawn back, and here I, I sort of threatened the end game. And queen e7 is the best move. The funny thing about this game is he wanted to win. He played king f8, and now you know, I just played d3. He went for g5, but my knight's not here, so I don't have to worry about this. I ended up playing bishop d2, and castled and h4. And I got a dominating game. I ended up winning. Um, no, the King's Gambit's not refuted. It's just not considered like white has much of an advantage in, in lines like this. I mean, obviously you can't take on e5 because check. And you lose, you lose the rook. So this is a tough line. I've shown some of my students this line. This is a pretty balanced game. It's just not that exciting, you know. It's easier to decline the King's Gambit and, and get a normal solid position than it is to decline the Moore Gambit and get a normal solid position. And I would also say that the King's Gambit, and I talk about this in my book, it weakens the King on E1, right? Whereas the Moore Gambit, and John Davis, if you like Gambits, you gotta start playing the Moore Gambit. You know, if you're, you're supporting chess so much, it's only right that you uh, start living the, the high life in Gambit land and just going crazy. King's Gambit is good, but you gotta start being wild in the Mora Gambit. There's a lot to be had in the Mora. Let me tell you. You hate the Mora Gambit? Now, John, I don't know. I know you're supporting chess, but that, that hurts me to hear. Now, now, why do you hate the Mora Gambit? Let's, let's have some group therapy. Why do you hate the Mora Gambit? I don't think you know enough about it to hate it yet. Because you lose horribly every time against it. Well, if you can't beat them, you got to join them. Now, you have some questions. I mean, mm, it's not something you should hate, really. I mean, you know, usually they say if someone hates the opening, it's a compliment. Um, I think Bill Pascal said that recently. It's just, uh, it's very similar to King's Gambit, but a lot, a lot easier to play for white, really. Yeah, John, you, you need to play it. I mean, imagine if you were white and you were playing a game like this. You know, would you would you really hate it so much if your opponent played b4 and then you just hit him with knight d5 right there? And by the way, this is winning for white. Unlike King's Gambit, which is these sacrifices are, are not that winning. You know? So... So, knight d5, I mean, okay, you want to see the Chicago? First, John, I'll just, I refuted the Chicago in my book. So, I mean, this position, John, you really, this was a game, one of my favorite games. This is against an IM. And you can't, you can't really, you can't really, really, thank you, Kitty, for gifting five subs. Very nice. Bishop e7, bishop d6. This is a game I had, John, rook c1. And, you know, queen b6, and now, you know, white to move and win, knight g5. You cannot sack in the queen and mate. You cannot hate an opening. You cannot hate an opening that, that does this. Now, as for your question on the Chicago, what, what's your question on the Chicago? Since you have, you know, supporting the chess community, I, wa I want you to... You're worried about this, rook a7? Rook a7 is not. A move like this, you can't be afraid of. I mean, when they put rooks like here. So my best game, one of my best games ever is in this position. Against Vadim, my friend Vadim on my team, Mark Dorosov. You want to play this position against me, John? I'll do it. Fine. Before I show you the game, I will play you. But are you on Lee Chess? Can you challenge me? I'll do it. Since John's a special sub, I'll do it for him. I mean, usually I, I play Paul sometimes, but Paul doesn't want to play, and Jim doesn't want to play. All right, yeah, let's play this line. But uh, after the game, I'll show you 
how to play this. All right, I'm going to show people in the chat the game, but John, you're not allowed to look at the game. Those are the rules. All right. All right, guys. Yeah, Andromeda, you should play the King's Gambit. Basically, when you're learning chess, you should experience all the flavors of chess. You shouldn't hold yourself back. You want to familiarize yourself with everything, and it should be a learning process. You shouldn't say to yourself, this is my opening. This is a big mistake amateur players, beginner players make. This is my opening. This is what I know. No, it's not your opening. It's just one of many openings. You need to experience the full flavor of chess. You know, thank you, Kitty, very much. Eric, did you see the serve today? Serve today was getting heavier. Where's my best serve from today? Where is it? Not this one. This was a good point, Eric. I don't know if you were here for this. This guy is a monster that I'm playing. Can you imagine? He's 56 years old. He plays like this. It's just a total beast. I mean, he's, he's, he's beaten guys in the top 20 in the world before. In his prime. Alright, here we go, Eric. This was a big serve today. Oof. That was my favorite serve of the day. As we're waiting for... For, for, for John... Uh, using the legs. Uh, that's like the more gambit style. Let's see this. You like that, Eric? All right, here we go. This is this is okay. It's a winner. This was a second serve. You can see you're coming in. You gotta. That was a miss, but it's a solid second serve. Okay, here we go. Here's another one. Ace. Okay, he says, I want more. Keep serving more. This guy's a great, great player. Here we go. Coming in. Finally, I'm, you know, the volley was a little bit ridiculous. I mean, I'm still working on the volley. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the inside out forehand. Yeah some uh but eric i mean this guy's 56 years old can you imagine you can't he looks like he's like 35 he's just he's just a monster he's like my favorite tennis player look at this guy i mean he's he was beating me up the first set today or just we were just practicing it wasn't a big deal we weren't even keeping score but uh i mean where are the other ones i had some other tennis clubs yeah, he, he does look 20. Uh, he, yeah, he, he, he moves like, you know, he hits like he's 20. All right, John Davis, have you challenged me? Okay. 5-0, all right. Am I white? Okay, abort, rematch. All right. All right, this is John Davis's uh, game for supporting the community. He wanted to play the Chicago defense against me. This will be pretty funny. <laughs> okay, d6 first. Okay. Okay, seven. All right, now, obviously, bishop e3. And, you know, with this rook on d7, now, the, the ideal Chicago defense, you should put the knight on c6 first. And that's the end of the chapter in the Chicago defense. Now, the Chicago defense was actually the first chapter that I wrote when I sent a sample chapter to uh, publishers for my book. Knight d6 is the better move earlier, before you go for this. Now I get a knight d4. I first had this game with Hikaru in the year 2000 when we were juniors. I was 16, and he was 12 or 13. Yeah, okay, now f4. You could try knight f6 if you want. Knight f6 is logical. Play knight f6. 
knight f6 is logical. Okay, and and now this move runs into f5, e5, e5 makes sense. E5 is logical. Otherwise, the the bishop is just running, running loose. And now, John, this is why you and everyone else who loves chess should be playing at least the Mora Gambit for fun. You don't have to play it all the time. But it should be something that, that you appreciate, right, Eric? You know. Um, yeah, I'm... Uh, E5 is good. E5 is logical. Uh-huh, that's good. Takes, takes, takes. No. I don't... I've played a car enough. I don't need to... to, uh, to imitate. Um... Okay, so, John, you got to take that. If you don't take it, you know, bad stuff happens. Uh, take back. He doesn't want to take it. There you go. By the way, John, Queen A5 may be the best move, but not the most fun. So, John, queen a5 might be the best move, but white is better, actually, after queen a5. White can just actually take the bishop on f8, and then your king gets messed up, and I just have a better uh, grinding game. You can't castle. I got the bishop pair. So to test this sacrifice, you got to take. Now, if you play rook e7, you get run over by rook takes f6. So you got to go rook c7 in this position. Um, okay, and now bishop b6, and I teach this to my students, but this will teach you how to handle the Chicago defense. Now white's not a whole piece, but this is like the serve, you know, like the giant serve. Where is it? This is like, this is what I feel like when I'm playing Chicago defense as white. I feel like I'm doing this, you know, so now, okay, here we go. I could take I could take on f6 then take on e4 I mean this should be 7 the logical move this should be 4 I'll win pretty easily there yeah okay now rook c1 you can castle if you want. I just want to show you the possibilities. This position is very good for white. Um, you castle it makes sense. Okay, so now you've fallen into my game with Mark Tarasov, and it's better than me showing you the game is for you to experience these moves. But all the other moves were basically losing, and and I argue that this is uh, I argue that this is the um, refutation to the Chicago defense. Okay, so now I take on. C7. I first found this combination when I was 16. Um, and I talk about it in my book. It's probably the most creative combination I ever played in a, bl in a blitz game when I was younger. Take on. And now knight d5. Double attack. Gotta go back. Um, knight d5. So you gotta go queen d8. Can't believe he's falling into this. Okay, queen d8 is the only move. Uh, I just, I'm up a queen. We'll talk about all the moves, by the way, that you're making. And why, why they're, you gotta go queen d8. Because if you play knight d5, I, I exchange, I exchange, I come in and I mate you. I exchange on f8, then I take your queen. And then I just play... Yeah, queen d8. Okay, so this is the position I want you to to uh, appreciate. 
we, we, we can talk about this. Um, but, um, no. The beautiful thing about this position is that this is my best piece, and this is his worst piece. But it's not really his worst piece because it's blockading this monster pawn. So John's instincts were good, you know, he tried to avoid this. But I just want to show him the art of this position. So I actually take this guy. And this is one of my most favorite combinations I've ever played. I take it. He's got a take. And then I'm coming rook c7, the monster rook c7. Very artistic. And this is my game with Vadim, teammate of mine. I played it in 2000 and 2008. Now, e7 check. D5 is the right move. If you play rook f7, I take on f6. Um, so here, I would play rook takes f6, and then I make a queen. So this is winning for me. And then, so d5 is better. So d5 now. And now, so the funny story goes, I was so excited about this position when I was 16 that I wanted to impress my, my friend. That I, It was just a casual game in the Miami Chess Club, and I was so excited that I played queen takes d5 because I wanted to sacrifice everything. As a kid, you're just very excited. And I, I thought there was going to be a brilliancy. And then he, he was talking trash, too, in Spanish, too, to me, English and Spanish. Then bishop takes d5, and then bishop takes d5. And I'm down a queen. I thought he just has king h8, then I made him. But he plays rook f7 there. And then after rook takes f6, queen takes e7, I'm out of material. So then in 2008, eight years later, I got this position right. In, in uh, four seconds, I played this game because I knew the position. So, John, you should take on d5 now. Um, yeah. No, he was talking Spanglish, yeah, talking trash. And now queen takes d5. And he was just, you know, talking trash. That's how we, we did it in the Miami Chess Club. Miami Chess Club was an amazing club, really fun. I was the only puro gringo there. Queen takes d5, beautiful move. If knight takes d5, I made him two different ways. Uh, Andromeda... Link the Mark Torosub game for a command for the for the show. So you gotta play Rook F7, John. And now the finishing blow, the beautiful move, Queen D8, and I make a new Queen. Now, th th this is a good game to, I mean, this is one of my most beautiful games. And you could resign and we could talk about it. But this is something that you learned. We don't have to play anymore. But if we wanna play, we can. But this is This is over now. All right, so we'll play on. I got an extra queen. All right, it's important to win the game in style. So he's resisting, okay. Mr. John is resisting. But it won't matter. If he takes here, I check. Then I sack the queen. Now I sack the queen, and that's mate. So you want to win in style and mate. It's pretty good, pretty good game. But this will teach you. Now let's let's talk about this game. Thank you, John. So, so that's in my book, and you could see the art of chess there. Uh. Um, so why, why isn't it, let's talk about the game, so, so, first of all, John, and everyone watching, the Chicago defense violates, yeah, you see, so you see that now you don't hate the Moore Gambit anymore, because you're having a good time, even losing, if you lose the right way, it's, it's, you know, it's great fun, and you could learn something. So, I mean, that's one of my favorite games to play now. You're not developing here with Rook A7. So, you can't, you know, you can't make moves with a Rook just to defend this pawn. I always knew this was suspicious when I was a kid. Now, Hikaru played this against me. 
because he read about it, he thought it was playable, but white has one, two, three, four, five pieces developed. And um, and black has none. So knight d4. Um, and so now I'm hitting this sensitive spot. You see this rook defends d6, but it does not defend e6. So now you're getting hit with targets, you know, everywhere. Like for example, if you play bishop e7, you lose on the spot to uh, bishop e6. And you're just getting slammed here. Knight e7, you're gonna get you're gonna get brutally attacked. Yeah. The game ended in a draw against Hikaru. He was even then he was very fast. He had an hour and a half, and I had five minutes left. I had a winning position, so I took a draw. Um, then after the game, he showed me how I was winning. It was the U.S. Masters in 2000. We were both juniors. Um, the game with Hikaru went, I believe, knight f6, f4, e5, which is the best move. Even then, he had a good sense of uh, defense. Uh, but it, it was not sensible to do this as a, as a kid. He just read about it somewhere. Now he played bishop e7. And I I played bishop takes f7. Um, and then... I played check. If king g8, I'm... If king g8, he's losing to take. And mate. And king f8, he loses the... The queen. If king f6, he gets mated. Uh, so he has to come king e8, then knight e6. He's got to go queen a5, and now I took. Take. Check. And the beautiful thing about this position is if king f7, I have queen h5, check. And I saw this, but it was taking me a lot of time. Rook takes f6. And mate. Right? Again, John, like the king's gambit, the f-file is important. Oh, he laughed. When I played on, he came up and and, and kind of laughed at, at both of us that the game was going on. But but I don't think he'd laugh too much in the game if we played. But um, but he, he would laugh in that sense, like, you know. But he, he always thought it was a very serious opening, actually, even if he would make jokes about it. And he once defended me uh, when I was playing it 10 years ago, um, saying that it was a very serious opening. So... Whether or not it was sound, he wasn't sure. Um, but the book kind of shows that it's sound. Um, so it went like this. Take, take, and now take. And here, I didn't have any time, so I took a draw. I literally had no time, but actually this move knight d5 is just lights out. When I saw knight d5, because if he takes like this, it's mate in two. Yeah, so he'd have to play rook d5. I literally missed it, and I had like moves like d6. It's kind of an easy win for me. You could see it's like plus. The uh, computer's not working, but it's completely winning for me. So anyway, um, that was the Hikaru game. But then after, after this game, yeah, let me just show you the evaluation. So this position is. Oh, look at this position, everyone. Knight d5 is winning. That's what he showed me after the game. He's winning. But actually, this move b4 is the, it's just an unbelievable move, b4. I talk about b4 in my book. I mean, b4 is a tremendous move. <laughs> I mean, the idea that queen b4 is this is mate. And if he takes with the rook, I take with check first, and then I pick up his queen. It's really tremendous move, b4. Uh, and if bishop here, then then his king is just getting shellacked in the middle of the board. Oh yeah, I remember this from my book. Oh my goodness, look at this knight in the F file. Um, so that's just really rough, right? So that's completely winning for, for white. But B4 is a tremendous move. Imagine if I got to play this move. I, maybe now I'd be able to, to look for such a move. Because now I know I didn't have that same confidence in the attack that I have now, right? So if I got this position now, I would believe in it more. But then I didn't have, um, I was so young.
and inexperienced. Yeah, so B B four is just winning. Um, it's it's nastier than my serve error. You sure? I guess. Is it? So it's nastier. I gotta get my serve better. Is it nastier? Yeah, it's nasty. B4 is nasty. Okay, so uh, Mayhem in the Moor, right there. Yeah, you love my book. Um, okay, so anyway, so in the game, John, F4, Bishop B7, now you're in big trouble. And you can see the computer didn't really understand this back then, but F5. E5 and now knight e6. Now look, John, you played the best move. Queen a5, second best move. But you could see that it, it's a serious problem for you. Oh wow. Look at this. This is even worse than it was. The old computer suggested knight f8, but that never made much sense to me. The new ones, you just leave the, the knight there. This is just terrible. Look at this attack. If he takes, takes. And just rook f6. Shattered. Shattered lights out meatball position mate Oof. Okay, so anyway knight e6 Okay, so you took Now rook e7 loses to rook takes f6 Take and check right Okay, so he has to play rook c7, and now bishop b6. Now, if you try and break the pin with queen c8, you encounter one of the filthiest positions. Now, this is nastier than my serve. Rook takes f6. Take, check. Okay, king e7, I check first. King d8, look at this position. Look at his pieces, everyone. And now rook c1. Look at rook c1 now. Um, and you know, if knight c6, this gets even worse. This is just really bad. Um, so this is winning by force. Plus six, okay. So I guess that's sound. Okay, so the best defense here, everyone, after rook c1 is actually to sacrifice the queen. And to play rook takes c3, bishop d8, takes, and queen takes d8, and now take with the king. If you take with the bishop, you get hit with queen g5, and you can't defend g6 in time because if you play king f8 queen h5 is mating yeah chicago defense is not serious eric and i never really played we played one informal blitz game or two blitz games we never played any real games um we just played when he was very young he must have been 15 at the time um so yeah, so this I cover, this is the best defense for white and now queen e3 I believe, and white white should, yeah it goes up, white should have a winning game here, it's complicated though, but yeah black gets some defenses but you can see white's queen is, is penetrating, hmm, the position. Um, yeah, so this is interesting. I had this game, and I played this online, and this is no good actually. After king b8, I can't take, because I'm losing the bishop d8 or something. Unbelievable. So actually, in this position, the winning move is queen a7. <laughs> and then bishop d5. And he can't, he can't coordinate himself. 
Um, what do you want to see? I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll do that. Eric and I will both do that for, you know, for fun. But, um, <clears throat> okay, takes. Rook c7. And this was the game. Bishop e7, rook c1. Yeah, this position's losing now. You could see it. It's all forced. There's no defense. And John, if you did this, then then just rook rook f8. Um, if you take with the bishop, my pawn runs and I I'm, I win everything, right? Um, if you take with the king, then I take and then I play queen h5 and you're mated, right? This pawn is too strong. Um, yeah, thank you, John. And you'll, you'll like my book. The whole book is like this, so. So, so, I mean, you just picked the Chicago, which is, you know, it's like I have a whole lifetime in, the, in that area. Take and rook c7. One of my favorite positions. If, and after rook f7, rook takes f6. And winning, right? Completely shattered. But you know, the funny thing is that, is that after d5, like a clown as a kid, I did this. <laughs> and, 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 and losing. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, I mean, this was, this was bishop d5 and rook f7. And then, you know, I think he just did did this and like he's like come on that call will do that man you know you're nothing you're and he was the national high school champion and he was just talking so much trash to me after this but you know i knew then that this was a great game i knew that that it was a great game it was just spoiled by one move it's like playing a tennis match and you just miss one shot and everyone says oh it's 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 nothing it's not a good it's not a good good tennis but you know that it's good i got to play it again in harvard against my teammate and that's when the game got published. Um, I played the game in four seconds, literally, because I had been waiting for eight years to get somebody again. Takes, and then queen takes d5. Of course, published it later, and and there you go. So again, if you want to play the Chicago defense, and I talk about this, John, d6 first, slightly better version, knight c6, and now b5 avoids this, okay? It avoids this. Bishop e3, rook d7. Now, most people don't read the book so carefully, so this is in the back of the Chicago Defense chapter, but this position I also argued was, I can't believe the computer now says plus 2.4. That's news to me, but this, so I don't cover this in the book, but it doesn't surprise me this is also winning. It makes me very happy to see that, that just a4 and then knight d5 is just winning. It makes me laugh. But I'm not sure how winning it is, but the idea would be that knight e7 or knight e5, we meet with a5 with pins everywhere. And look at this evaluation for a piece down. Bishop b7, like, okay, if he does this, there's like... <laughs> Pin, pin to death, they say. Uh, this is just pinned to death. Um, now look at this position. I believe that, that on queen d7, we would have bishop a4 here, yeah. I mean, look at this position. Mm hmm. I don't know intuitively, it just looks like it's completely mating him. Yep. Yeah. If he takes on c8, we mate him. Check and mate. If he takes on e5, we have check here, and check here, and it's mate. Or he has to give the queen, and then he gets mated. All by his lonesome. If this, he gets mated, filleted in the center of the board. Yeah, because they were they wanted me to do a second edition, and they were telling me that Chicago is even more refuted. But I told them like my, my refutation's good enough. We don't you know we don't need a we don't need a second edition. Uh. Yeah, I play the Smith Moore as black, and I and I take it when I play it. So anyway, uh, guys, uh, 
After rook d7, I gave rook fd1, which is more thematic now. The idea is, I used to play this sacrifice, knight takes b5, and you can see that it's playable. You can see that it's still white is better, just sacking another piece, and the, this rook is so bad, look at these pins. But then I decided that I had a tough game in Miami when my opponent played knight e7 and defended like this. So then I decided that the best way is to actually delay it, play rook fd1, which I give a an exclaim in my book. And the idea is that if he plays bishop e7 now, knight b5 is just winning. Oh look, I could play knight a4 too. But this is just totally crushing. And I had this game. I had this game in a tournament. This was really funny, this game. I had this in the World Open. And here my opponent played knight takes d4. And I played queen takes b7. And then he's lost. So you see these, these pins are working. And now the other the other idea of this is if he plays bishop to b7, then I play knight g5. And now I'm sacking here. And, and this is also winning for me, similar to the game. So Chicago defense is not really something that 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 you need to be concerned about, really. And there you go. So so that's a live version of uh of uh of uh Chicago defense. All right. Anyone have any questions? Oh, I don't know. It was called the Chicago because it was played in Chicago by a grandmaster. Some grandmasters believed in the Chicago defense. But it's not really that serious, right? Good night, John. Take care. See you. Take care. Nice to meet you, ma'am.